Today's lesson, 8.2, is about special right triangles. We're going to talk about why some triangles are special, they get used a lot, and why that mean, and why that matters to us. And those two triangles are a 45-45-90 triangle, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define it, and then we're going to determine the side ratios. And the other special right triangle is a 30-60-90 triangle, which again will define and determine the ratios. Then we'll do a bunch of example problems, and in one of those example problems I will demonstrate the graphic organizer that I gave you in class and is available on Canvas. Like all graphic organizers, it's designed to be used at first as you're, still, as you're first learning how to do the problems, and then as hopefully the idea is that as you use it more and more, you don't need it anymore and you can do the problems without them. Um, but again, it's available on Canvas. You can use it as much as you need until you no longer need it. Right. So by today, we have two objectives, that by the end of the class, you'll be able to use the common ratios of the special right triangles to find the lengths of the missing sides, and we'll be able to do that in 45, 45, 90 triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles, and some problems will actually have multiple triangles, we'll have to do both. Okay. So why are some triangles special? So if you look at these two triangles, we know they're similar through angle-angle. They both have a 90-degree angle and a 60-degree angle. Okay. And like all similar triangles, the ratio of corresponding triangles within these triangles are equal. So if I take the small, the small side of the small triangle and the small side of the big triangle and look at the medium side of the middle and the medium side of the big, and finally the big side of the little one and the big side of the big one, what I know is that the ratio of any of those two sides between the big and the small are equal because again these are these are um, corresponding, excuse me, these are similar triangles so the ratios of the corresponding sides within them must be equal. And that's true even if one of the triangles is gigantically big, like as big as a building, and another one is very tiny and, can barely, and you can barely see it on your piece of paper. It doesn't matter how big or small they are, the ratio of their sides is always equal. And some triangles get used more than often, uh, more, more than others, and we call those special. And since they're used so often, if, we, if it's useful to memorize these ratios, so we don't have to calculate them any time, and then we can do problems much more quickly. And those two triangles that it's useful to memorize those ratios are the two special triangles, 45, 45, 90 triangles, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Mm -hmm. So what makes, these, what makes these two triangles so special? Well, for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's a right triangle with a pair of 45 degree angles, that's what it is. But why is it special? It's special because it's, an, it's the only isosceles right triangle. And secondly, if you take a square and cut it in half with a diagonal, it makes a 45-45-90 triangle. For the 30-60-90 triangle, again, it's just a, a right triangle with a 30 and 60 degree angles. And why it's special is that it's half of an equilateral triangle. If I take that equilateral triangle and I draw the altitude, which I labeled A in this drawing here, you'll see that it creates a 30-60-90, in fact, two 30-60-90 triangles. Um, and because that uh, and because that cuts it in half, the hypotenuse of the leg is S in this case, one half of as big as the side. All right, so here is our first example problem for the day. I would like for you to, given that this is an isosceles right triangle with a leg of A, um, determine the length of the hypotenuse in terms of A. So you can pause the video and do this problem. Um, and then once you unpause it, I'll show you how to do it. So here's how we do it. This is a right triangle, there's a leg, there's a leg, there's the hypotenuse. I'm going to call this leg A, this leg B, and the hypotenuse C. Again, the hypotenuse is always, and for my Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse across from my right angle is always C. A and B don't matter, they can switch. Okay. And I know that that means that my Pythagorean theorem A squared plus B squared equals C squared holds, like all right triangles. This is asking for an isosceles right triangle with legs A. It means that the two sides have the same length. So I'm going to get rid of B there and call it A because they're both equal to A. And just like I got rid of that B in my equation, I'm going to get rid of the Bs. And I know that A squared plus A squared equals C squared. So now I can 
add those together. I, want, I don't want c squared, I want c alone, so I can take the square root of both sides. And when I do, I end up with c is equal to a square root of 2. And then, let's see, let's determine what kind of triangle this is. If I put, I know that this is an isosceles triangle, so the base angles are equal. Therefore, I know that x plus x plus 90 equals 180. 2x equals 90, therefore x equals 45. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And so now in our notes, we can talk about 45, 45, 90 triangles. What, are, what is it? It is an isosceles right triangle, as we said before. The angles are 45, 45, 90, and the key thing is the ratios of, those tri of this triangle. And the sides are in the ratio of n, n, n root 2. So each leg is equal to each other, n, and the hypotenuse is root 2 times that. And root 2 is about 1.4. So if, for example, if we said that each leg was 10, then the hypotenuse would be about 14 because it's root 2 times that. The next example problem we're going to do is if you're given an equilateral triangle with sides of 2a, I need us to calculate the length of the altitude. So push pause and try that. Okay. So here is an equilateral triangle, and it has sides of 2a. So each of the sides must be 2a and I'll draw the altitude of that triangle, and I'm going to call it H for height. You could call it A for, I guess you can't call it A for altitude because we're using A, but you call it a different uh, variable if you want. Okay. And then notice that this altitude cuts the bottom side in half. So I'm going to label it instead of 2A across the entire bottom side, I'm simply going to say that each side is, is A. Now I'm going to take this triangle over on the left, and I'm going to move it out of the way so we can do a little work on it. Okay. And looking at this triangle, this is a right triangle, so I know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, a squared plus h squared is going to equal 2a squared. 2a squared is 4a squared. If I subtract a squared from both sides, I end up with h squared, or my altitude, equals 3a squared. Take the square root of each, and I end up with that, that, that altitude h equals a root 3. Now let's go back to our original triangle here, and it's an equilateral triangle, so all the angles are equal. If I add them up, they're equal to 180, so each of them is 60. This is a 60-60-60 triangle, so in the half of that triangle, it is a 30-60-90 triangle, which is the kind of triangle we're talking about here in our notes. So what is a 30-60-90 triangle? Well, I put this little chart here. The side that is opposite the 30 degree angle is the short leg and the ratio of that side is n across from the 60 degree angle is the longer leg or the middle side the ratio of that is n root 3 and across from the 90 degree angle is of course the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse ratio of the hypotenuse is 2n so we put them all together here again we see that the smallest side is n the hypotenuse is twice as big as the small side 2n and the long leg is root 3 times as big as that small side. Root 3 is about equal to 1.7. So if we said that the small leg is equal to 10, then the hypotenuse would be 20, and the larger leg would be about 17, 10 times root 3. All right, so that's the geometry. Let's make sure that we know how to do these problems. Let's do a couple of example problems. We'll start with easiest ones and move our way forward. Again, the thing to do is you should pause in between each of these and try them yourself to make sure that you can do them before looking at the answers. Alright, let's go through example problem number three. We're supposed to find those missing side lengths of x and y. And so to do this, I do this in four steps. The first step is to determine which type of special triangle is it. And when I look at this one, this is a 45-45-90 triangle. Second thing I would do, step two, is to write the ratios in. And I write these ratios in right on the triangle itself. So which ratios are we talking about? Well, if it's a 45, 45, 90, it's a root, it's, it's a n, n, n root 2. So again, I'm going to write these right on the, tri on the sides. That side is n, that side is n, this side is n root 2. 
Step three is I need to find a side with a value. When I look at the leg over on the left, it has y. I don't know how big it is, it's just a variable. When I look at the hypotenuse, it's x. I don't know how big it is, it's just a variable. Well, when I look at this leg at the bottom, right there, I see it has a value. That value is 8. I also know that that value is not only 8, but I know that that side is equal to n. So if that bottom leg is equal to n and that bottom leg is 8, I can use it to write an equation. And that equation is those two things must be equal. So n equals 8. The final thing I have to do in step three is then solve this equation. And for this problem, I don't have to solve it. it just, it's already solved for me. It's just n equals 8. So I don't have to solve for n. Finally, for step four, I'm going to use that variable of n equals 8 to calculate the other sides. For y, I know y equals n. And if n equals 8, then y equals 8. x equals n root 2. So if n is 8, then x equals 8 root 2. Now I'm going to do this exact same problem again. I'm just going to do it to demonstrate to you how you can use your graphic organizer. Again, the graphic organizer is just a, a crutch you can use as you're learning how to do these problems that as you use more and more of them, you can stop using it. And again, this is available on Canvas, and I gave it to you in class. So here's this exact same problem, but using the graphic organizer. The first step is to draw the triangle. So I've done that. After that, I'm going to put on my sides, so n, n, n root 2. After that, I need, to, I need to solve for n. In this case, it's just n equals 8. And then given that, I can find the three sides that I need. n in this case would be 8, n would be 8, and n root 2 would be 8 root 2. So this graphic organizer just shows us those steps one at a time so we can make sure that we are doing them all correctly. All right, let's move on to our next problem, problem number 4. This is also asking us to find our missing sides, in this case, a and b. So again, let's do our four steps. Step one, we're identifying this as a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Step two, that means we're going to put n, n, n root 2 on our sides. So n, n, n root 2, n root 2 across from the right angle to hypotenuse. Step three is find a value with sides. There it is. Use that to write an equation and then solve that equation. Okay, I don't want n root 2, I want n. So I need to divide both sides by root 2 which I can do like that, and then I end up with n equals 3. And then finally I can use step 4, use that ratio variable to calculate the other sides. Well, a equals n, so it's just 3. b equals n, so it's just 3. So in this case, both a and b are equal to 3. Let's try example problem number 5. In this problem, step 1, identify it as a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Step 2, we're going to put on our ratios of n, n, n root 2. Step 3, find the side with a, with a value. Use that to write an equation. And then solve that equation. In this case, n root 2 equals 5. I don't want n root 2, I want n. So I'm going to divide both sides by root 2. And when I do that, I get n equals 5 over root 2. But I can't have a root in my denominator, so I need to get rid of that. And to do that, I can multiply by, use my identity property, multiply by 1, but I'm going to multiply by root 2 over root 2 is 1. When I do that, then in my numerator, I get 5 root 2. and my denominator, I get root 2 times root 2, which, of course, is 2. So my answer is that n equals 5 root 2 over 2. Once I have that, step 4 is trivial because u just equals n, which is 5 root 2 over 2, and v equals n, which is 5 root 2 over 2. All right, let's try problem number 6. Identify this as a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Put in our ratios of n, n, n root 2. Find a side with a variable, a side with a value. There it is. Use that to write an equation. There it is, nothing to solve. It has n for us. And then I can use that variable to calculate my other side. So in this case, u equals n root 2, which would be there's n root 2. And root 2 times root 2 is just 2. The 2's cancel, so 7. u would be 7. And v is, of course, just n, which is 7 root 2 over 2. 
All right, so those are the examples of our 45, 45, 90 problems. Let's try some examples of the 30, 60, 90 problems, which are being shown to you in the classwork 8.2, what you could try after you go through these examples. All right, so our first example, relatively simple. We start out, we look, and we say this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I'm going to put on the ratios of n, n root 3, and 2n. I'm going to find a side with a variable excuse me, find a side with a constant, use that to write an equation, and solve that equation, in this case just n equals 2, and then use that ratio variable to solve the other sides. So in this case m, side m, is just equal to 2n, so that would be 4, and side n, confusing, sorry that it's called n, side n is equal to our ratio variable n root 3, and if our ratio variable n is 2, then side n equals 2 root 3. All right, problem number 8. Step 1, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Step 2, we're going to put in our ratios of n, n root 3, and 2n. Step 3, we're going to find the side that has the, the constant, and we're going to use that to write an equation, and then we can solve it. If 2n equals 2, then n equals 1. Then we can use that variable to solve our other sides. So in this case, side n just equals n, which equals 1. And side m equals n root 3. So that would be 1 root 3. And just like a variable, we, wouldn't, we don't say 1x, we say x. We don't say 1 root 3, we would just say root 3. So side n is equal to 1, and side m is equal to root 3. Problem number 9, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. These ratios are in the sides of n, n root 3, 2n. So we can find the side with the variable. We can use it to write an equation. And then we can solve that equation and come up with n equals 6. And then use the variable, use that ratio variable to calculate the other sides. Side n equals n, so that's just 6. And side m equals 2n, so that would be 12. Problem number 10. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The ratios are n, n root 3, 2n. So we're going to put those right on the triangle. Find an equation. It would be n equals 5 root 3. Nothing like, I don't have to solve it. It's already done for me. So then I can use that ratio variable to calculate the other sides. So v is n root 3. If n is 5 root 3 over 3, then I'm just going to rewrite that as n root 3. That means it's 5 root 3 times root 3 over 3, and root 3 times root 3 is 3. And so if I cancel my 3's, I'm left with that v equals 5. And u equals 2n, so it's 2 times 5, 3 root 3. 2 times 5 is 10, so the answer would simply be 10 root 3 over 3. Problem 11. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The ratios are on the side of n, n root 3, 2n. Find the side that has a constant. Use it to write an equation. Solve that equation. So we have n equals n root 3, which I can then use for step 4 to calculate the other sides. That u is n root 3. So it would be, if n is 2 root 3, it's 2 root 3 times root 3. That would be 2 times 3, which equals 6. And v was just equal to n, so that's equal to 2 root 3. Problem 12. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's in the ratio of n, n root 3, to n. We can use it to find which side has a value. It would be right there. We can then solve that equation. n root 3 equals 3. So I can divide both sides by root 3, and I end up with n equals 3 over root 3. But of course, I can't have a root in my denominator. So I'm going to multiply by root 3 over 3, and I end up with in my numerator, 3 root 3, in my denominator, root 3 times root 3, which of course equals 3, and the 3's cancel, so all that together equals root 3. So n equals root 3. And then I can use that 
to calculate the other sides. So in this case, a is equal to 2n, which would be 2 root 3, and b is equal to just n, which again is not 1 root 3, just root 3. All right, so now we've done problems of 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Some problems you have to do um, both. You may have to do both, so let's do some examples of that. All right, so our first question, to do this one, I'll notice, you'll notice that I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle at the top and a 30, 60, 90 triangle at the bottom. And I, I need to solve for x, which is on the bottom side, which is on the bottom triangle. However, there are no values. There are no values for sides in that bottom triangle. So what I can do is I notice that this side here is a common side between the top and the bottom triangle. I'll call it side Y. What I can do is I can solve that top triangle, which I'll call in the first part of the problem 13A. I'll use it to solve what Y is. And then once I have Y, I can essentially do a second special triangle problem using the value of Y to find X, which I'll call 13B. So let's go through the first part. We're using the fact that it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle with the ratios of n, n, n root 2 to help us solve for y. So I can put on my values. I find this side with a value. n equals 8. So I don't have to solve it. It's already just equal to 8. And then I can use it for y. And y equals n root 2. Therefore, y must equal 8 root 2. So now that I have that, I can do the second part of my problem, which again I'll call 13b, where now I have that side is 8 root 2. So now I look and I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle on the bottom with the ratios of n, n root 3, 2n. And I can solve n because 2n equals 8 root 3, so n equals 4 root, I'm sorry, 8 root 2, so n equals 4 root 2. And then I can use that to solve for the side I want, x, which equals n. Therefore, it's equal to 4 root 2. All right, let's try another multi-special uh, triangle problem. This one a little more difficult. Problem 14. In that bottom triangle, I have a value, and the common side is here. So I'm going to use that bottom triangle to solve side y. And then I can use y to solve x in that top 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right, so again, that bottom triangle is a 45, 45, 90. It's in the ratio of n, n, n root 2. I can see that n, um, that n, the side 5 root 6 is the one I have a value for, so I can use that to write an equation, which just solves into n equals 5 root 6. And then I can use that to solve for side y. y equals n root 2, so that, I'd, that would equal 5 root 6 times root 2, which equals 5 root 12. But of course, root 12 can reduce down into 2 root 3, and 5 times 2 is 10. So we have, whoops, excuse me, so we have that y equals 10 root 3. Now that I have 10 root 3, I can put it on my equation here, and now solve the top special triangle problem with a 30, 60, 90 triangle with ratios of n, n root 3, 2n. Use that to find that 2n equals 10 root 3, divide by 2, and n equals 5 root 3. And I'm asked to solve for x, which is n, so x is 5 root 3. All right, the final problem, this one of 15a, this is the, the hardest problem I could find. If you can do this one, you can do any of our special right triangle problems. So... Once again, I'm going to use the triangle over on the right, this 30, 60, 90, to find the common side, which I'll label as y. Once I do that, I can use y to find the value of x. So first, the triangle over on the right, that is a 30, 60, 90, with the ratios of n, n root 3, and 2n. And I can use that to find a, common, a side that has a value right there. And I can use that to solve for my ratio variable n. So if I divide both those sides by root 3, I end up with n equals 7 root 2 over root 3. Can't have a root in the bottom, so I multiply by root 3 over root 3. I end up with, when I multiply that out, that n is 7 root 6 over 3. So I can take that value of n equals 7 root 6 over 3, put it in my 
put it in my equation, or so you put it in my triangle, and use that now to solve the second spe special triangle problem we have, which is, in this case, a 45-45-90 triangle over on the left with the variables of n, n, n root 2. I can then use that to find the side with the value, which is here, use it to write an equation, and it's already solved of n equals 7 root 6 over 3. And then it's asking me to find the last side, which is x, which is n root 2. So I can say, well, n is 7 root 6 over 3, multiply that by root 2. That means that it's 7 root 6 root 2 over 3, 7 root 12 over 3, and once again, root 12 can simplify to 2 root 3. Multiply that out, 7 times 2 is 14. So 14 root 3 over 3 is my answer. If I, uh, x equals 14 root 3 over 3. And as I said, if you can solve this problem, you can solve any of them. This has got multiplying of roots, dividing of roots, simplifying, it's all right here.